This material that I'm using today is uh, <clears throat> it's called blackjack underlayment. Um, it's meant to go under like the wood click together flooring. They sell it at Home Depot, they sell it in Lowe's, um, they sell it in floor places. But I paid $44 for a roll that is 4 feet wide and 100 feet long. What the material really is, it's kind of like the craft foam. It's about an eighth of an inch or so thick. Um, and it's got a shiny side and a more of a matte side. So it's, it's, this is more matte. Hard to tell because I'm right next to a light, so it's reflecting a lot. But there's a real shiny side and a more matte side to it. Um, and the shiny side has a real smooth surface, almost like patent leather. Um, and you might use this to make like fake pirate boots or something because it does have a very leather look. And it's the same as that craft foam. If you recall, I made a leather Hannibal mask out of that, the brown craft foam. So this would work to replace black leather stuff. I have downloaded uh, and printed out just a couple patterns. And I, what I put in was bird pattern and crow pattern. And I got these things here. This is a very cute bird and it's not going to work for what I want. But I can modify this. So that's what I'm going to go off of. And I'm going to modify it right here on the piece of paper. I know how crows are shaped, and I actually want to ch alter the head shape of this and give it a much longer beak. I'm going to go a little more slender in the body. And I'm going with a much longer tail. And this little, I'm going to trace for you just so you can see it. This right here is supposed to be what they have for a wing, because that'll be a very cute little bird. I'm not going to use that at all, because that's just going to be ridiculous. So there is that. Let's try it with a straight tail. Then I'm going to do a wing, which I'll need to do two wings here. All right, I now have what I want traced out. Um, you could buy the black crows from uh, craft stores and whatnot, a couple places online that sell them out of real feathers. But I want like 70 of them, and I don't want to have to pay 4 and $6 a piece for them. So, you know, call me cheap, but this is how I do them. Um, I'm using a circle cutter to cut out a lot of this. Uh, be careful with these because you can uh, easily lose a whole digit because these things are sharp. Awesome, but a touch on the dangerous side. And if you don't have one, get one. And not just because I said they're dangerous, they're also very effective. And it works just as well on fabric as it does on foam. So what I'm doing for this is I'm just taking something that's pointy and I'm going to use the shiny side of my material. And I'm using a, a fid for leather work. And I'm just going to press down over the lines that I drew or their pattern lines that I want. I'm going to peel this back and look, and I'm making a nice scribe line in that foam, and that's where I know to cut it. These are going to be good sized birds, and they're not going to be hero birds. They're not going to be the ones I want right up in their people's face, but if I'm going to put them up in trees, or on top of fences, or on top of wall panels, I think these will work just fine. There's my wing that I made up. I'm going to have to cut him out and then flip him over and do him again. I'm going to trace this out and then we'll get to putting it together.
Okay, and you can see that I have my pattern etched in there. Take my circle cutter. Now, a lot can be done with silhouette. Uh, this would be perfectly fine to put up on top of wall panels or really far in the distance to give the illusion of numbers. Just this silhouette. Um, every year I do a couple big foam silhouettes at my haunt. I just cut out with the hot wire foam cutter and they work great. We paint them flat black, we light them from behind. Uh, sometimes they think they're an actor, sometimes just a cool architectural detail. Um, but they're, you know, they always actually get a response from guests because you know, it's a nice, unique silhouette and shape. And these, you know what it is by looking at it. It's already black, and you can easily attach it to the top of wall panels. But I need two of these to get my birds for each one. So I'm going to cut out all my parts real quick. So you can guard the blade when you're not using it, and now it won't cut you. But if I did that now, it would hurt. And there's going to be a right and a left. If I want the shiny side out, I need to trace this guy on the matte side so that I have shiny side and shiny side. And for these crows, I do want them shiny side out. You can take as much time as you want on these birds. Uh, I could certainly build hero birds out of this same pattern, same technique, or I could uh, buy a few hero birds, which, you know, hero meaning the ones that are up close and personal, and they're the ones that the guests see first. You know, if you have, you know, ten trees with full of these blackbirds, the first tree can be full of purchased birds, and, you know, that kind of gets oohs and ahs. And then their mind fills in, if, the, if you have these birds next, their mind fills in that uh, you know, they're all the same kind of bird and the same style. Alright, I'm going to get a hot glue gun now and start assembling this guy. I have my hot glue gun here. Lay this piece out and a top along the line of the back. That whole back line down the beak, I'm running glue. Put my gun away, pick up my bird parts. I'm just laying them together and pushing them down. I'm going to take my belly piece and I'm going to start just folding the edge over just a little bit because I want to mount this inside of here to span this and make this bird a lot more 3D. So that's what I'm going to do. I just want my glue to cool completely before I move on. The belly piece will go in. All right. And that goes up under here, um, and then, and I see it's too long, so I'm just going to trim a bit of this tail off. And I just don't want square corners, so I just nip those corners off. Looks like I got the wings a good length, so pattern's going to work out great. I just got to let my hot glue cool enough to where I can bend this around and move it a bit without it coming apart on me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start, and I've got the belly peeled open a bit. Pulling up my glue gun, and I'm starting a line right on the edge of the belly, the same as I did on the other piece.
I'm matching up this point is going up into the neck. I'm just pinching these pieces together. You can see if that kind of came undone and that's okay because that cools off the glue and makes this bond is going to be better. And you can see I'm getting some body now to my bird. I'm going to do the other side. pinching it together and I have a bit extra hanging off on the side and I'm just going to cut that off. See I have just an extra flange there that doesn't really fit in, it's not that great of a seam. I'm just going to cut it off to get my bird shaped back. Now, the tail, this, these two tail pieces go this way and this one goes this way, and that's great. Uh, I just need to split the tail, the bottom piece, because what I'm going to do is give it that classic kind of bird shape, like a scissor tail kind of, by gluing those to the sides, which will also help me round out the belly a bit. And now instead of having just one, you know, piece back here, I've got three, which looks a little more bird authentic. And I've got a weird ramp shape going on with them, but I'm going to fix that when I put the wings on. So now he's got a tail, right? And he's got those. And now it's time for some wings. Uh, this foam works really well with a heat gun to uh, change its shape. Yeah, it's hot. I have warmed this, and now I'm just going to give it a fold. that fold to kind of kick in. There's a wing. Let me just... There we go. Now I kind of have the shoulder formed and that's going to sweep down past the body and help fill out this bird. Open this guy up. I'm not going to glue the whole length, I'm just going to glue it here at the shoulder. Um, and you can spend as much time as you want on these, or as little. Um, you know, like I said, they could just be silhouettes for some of the birds. Uh, this is, I guess I'm going to take about five or ten minutes on this bird. Less if I wasn't. Uh, chatting while I'm doing it. This is, you know, a, a finished blackbird. If you saw him from a distance away, up in a tree, you know this is a crow, or this is some kind of a, you know, a crow or a small raven or something. Uh, how do you attach them? Well, imagine that all these white pipe cleaners are black pipe cleaners. Okay? You're honkers, you should have a good imagination. Right about where the legs would be, I'm going to poke two holes in this bottom plate. I'm going to run this through it. 
and now you can wire this guy to a branch okay just with the uh, pipe cleaners uh, you might you might need the wire off this section but you know he will stay up by his pipe cleaners and you can wire him right on if you use a stiffer wire um, or glue it on the inside before you put it together then he, you can wire him so it looks like he's up on his legs and up on his feet um, this one's pretty good but I'm not a huge fan of the head angle I would like the head angle to be down more so the next time I make one I'm going to tilt the head so the head is tilted but it's not fair you guys need to see that so I'm going to do a trick I'm going to cut his head not all the way through and now I can add foam but get the head shape any way that I want it. So I'm just going to take a little triangle of foam here and this is actually kind of good it'll mimic that collar that you know some of these birds look like they have. You ever see a crow looks like he's got a mane almost? Same kind of thing. So I'm just gonna put glue down on the outside edges That'll be plenty. Wasn't a fan of that head shape. In the future, I'll probably alter it in my pattern. But for now, I'm just going to alter it by gluing this foam on. Let that cool. Don't know if you guys are friends with me on Facebook or not, but I pose the question, you know, what's better, get it done or meticulousness as far as, you know, prop building and even approaches to life. And, you know, if you're not Facebook friends with me, send me a friend request, you know. I don't post a ton of stuff on there, but I'm pretty busy. But still, you know, why aren't your friends or friends with me? What the heck? So, all right. There now is a little bit better head angle. He's not looking as you know straight out as before, and I feel better about his general shape. He's a little bit triangular in you know force in you know straight on view, but he looks pretty good at three quarter. Uh, definitely good at half view, and not terrible from behind because he's got all these different birdie bits. Um, and you can add layer after layer if you want to, depending on how many of these you want to make, how long you want to take to do it. But get yourself a paper pattern. Um, once I had one that I liked, you know, then you can just trace it out or make a cardboard one and then just go on the foam over and over again. And I bet you can get 300 birds out of that roll of uh, foam for $44. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, let me move on from here though and do go to something similar but different. But this, this stuff is awesome. I'm going to draw a bat out on it. Alright, I want to draw the bat symbol uh, because the ears would be way too high up on that but actually the rest of the bat symbol isn't that bad. I don't know if you can tell, but I kind of I drew it. a lot of shine on this for you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut it out with my wheel. I want to give him a bit of face detail and a bit of chest detail in order to make it a little more believable. Um, so I'm going to put a pipe cleaner in here. Pretend this is black. I had a bunch of white ones. I didn't bother to buy any black ones. Uh, these are heavy enough to support two LEDs up there for eyes. If you wanted to do that, they are light enough that you could tie 50 or so to a ceiling fan and have a really cool room up over people's heads. Uh, and I'm just looking at what I've got. I'm going to make a chest piece that's a little bit bigger. 
because I'm going to fold it when I put it on. But, I, but I'm just doing, I mean, I'm making this up as I go, right in front. I haven't, haven't made too many of these before, and I don't have a pattern for them. Uh, and you might want to make a pattern for it if it's something you're going to make a lot of. Or not, you know, let them be individual. Making a little dip, so I'm doing a face for them also. Going hot glue on my edges. All the way around. And again, I'm not going to put it on straight. I'm going to pinch the middle so it's hollow. Alright, pinching the middle so it's hollow. I'm putting this on. And now my bat has a little bit of body. He's not just a flat bat, you know. I'm going to make him a little head, which is just going to be super simple. Just putting some hot glue on the inside of that. I'm giving this a pinch because this is going to be the nose area. And I'm putting this up here. Okay. It's kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing, but but what I'm doing is simple and easy, I swear. Just pinching it in place, um, and I'm about to call this bat done. See my little bat face that I just put on there? Now, if you wanted to go crazy and put on some eyes, you could. Uh, I don't think you would see a bat's eyes, you know, in uh, in darkness. You know, you're to see just this shape and this silhouette. Uh, I can use the heat gun to heat it, but first. I'm going to use the glue gun. I'm going to go around the edges and down the center here. And I'm going to give my back some bones. Uh, yes, he's a little bit rustic, but, um, you know. It's a, uh, what a fun little bat. You know, and how long did that take to do? Uh, you know, and you hang, make a forest. You know, don't, uh, this isn't about making one. If you're only making one, yeah, if you're going to make one, break out the dryer lint and, you know, put hair on it and uh, maybe the rabbit fur, just like the dead mouse video. Um, but this works pretty fine. You know, you could I, you could tell I'm holding a bat. I can tell I'm holding a bat. Um, you can heat it and you know give a bend to the wings because uh, it takes that heat pretty well. Um, you know, so if you want to change up a bunch of their shapes or whatever, but you know, bats and birds. That's what it's all about today, kids. Caw, caw, caw. Uh. Okay.